What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of Google's new flagship handset, the Nexus S. Let's go ahead and see if it lives up to its heritage. So the Nexus S is a follow-up to one of the best handsets of 2010, the Nexus One, so this guy has very big shoes to fill. Uh, the news here is that it was the first phone shipping with the newest build of Android 2.3. You may have heard that by the tasty name of Gingerbread. So before we jump into the review, let me remind you of the specs of this guy. So it's running a 1 GHz Cortex A8 Hummingbird processor, uh, same processor that we've seen powering the Galaxy S series of devices and Galaxy Tab. It's a very capable processor, uh, really is quite fast. Uh, it's got 16 gigs of internal storage. Curiously, there's no micro SD storage here, so leave your cards at home. It's got a 5 megapixel camera on the back with autofocus. It's got a 4 inch Super AMOLED screen right here, which is measured diagonally, with a resolution of 480 by 800. That Super AMOLED is going to give you darker blacks and it's going to give you brighter colors and better visibility in direct sunlight. It is also going to give you a bit of a bluish tint, which we'll talk about when we get to the screen in a few moments. And all that is sitting on top of 512 megabytes of RAM. So specs and all that aside, if this thing is not going to make good phone calls, it's not going to be of much use to you as a phone. Uh, so it is an unlocked device which has support for T-Mobile's 3G network and AT&T's Edge network. It does not have support for T-Mobile's HSDPA+, Plus, which is what they're calling 4G. So I tested this on both T-Mobile and AT&T. That was going to pull in very strong signal strength uh, with both networks. Certainly 3G with T-Mobile and Edge with AT&T. Much like the Galaxy S, the radio in here was very strong and I was able to get full bars of service anywhere I went in Southern California. That might not be rep best representative of what service is going to be in your area, uh, but at least where I am, I was able to pull in a pretty strong signal, especially compared to other devices. In my 20 call test, I did 10 on T-Mobile and 10 on AT&T. I had two drop calls on T-Mobile, which is relatively atypical, uh, and no drop calls on AT&T. Speakerphone volume was average, so if you rely on speakerphone pretty heavily, uh, this isn't going to be the loudest speakerphone on the planet, but it is going to be decent enough. All right, so now let's jump into the phone and let's talk about what's new here uh, with the outgoing Nexus One or versus the outgoing Nexus One. So what we're going to see, the big difference, is the inclusion of Gingerbread, which is the newest build of Android, as I mentioned. That brings with it a slew of new features. Now, I did an overview of Gingerbread going over all the things that are new, so I'm going to sort of touch on some of those points. If you want a full recap, the link to that video is going to be down below. So you're going to notice a few graphical changes here with the phone. The icons at the bottom now have color. They've got that green tint similar to the Android logo. Same thing here for the menu bar. The battery indicator has been sort of turned on its side. Uh, but the big news here is third-party APIs and how 3D graphics are going to be rendered. Uh, this phone really is very capable of handling uh, a vast amount of 3D graphics, which is going to give you much better in-game performance. So we might not see this performance right now, but as developers get access to these new APIs, uh, this phone in particular and phones that are going to be running Gingerbread uh, are going to have much, much, much better graphics to be able to take advantage of uh, the processor and the graphics uh, capabilities of the phone. So this is a Slate device, so it doesn't have any sort of physical keyboard, so we rely obviously very heavily on an on-screen keyboard. So let me go ahead and show you this real quickly. It's something that's new with Gingerbread, uh, this keyboard. Certainly, in my opinion, Android had a very nice keyboard before. Uh, Google has really improved that uh, with this version. So it looks a little bit different. You've got spaces between the keys, which is quite nice. Uh, the responsiveness is fantastic. If you liked typing on an Android keyboard before, this is going to be an even better experience. And certainly being Android and being open, you have the option to put on a ton of third-party keyboards. And you also have the voice recognition and the speech-to-text options here. So the keyboard input on this device is absolutely fantastic. Uh, one of the things that I found really impressive with the phone, and that's really true with most Galaxy S series of devices, uh, is the speed of the phone. Now, I think that's really able to be tested in sort of the prowess of the phone and a very intensive application like Google Earth. So this is quite processor uh, taxing and graphically taxing as well. Uh, in my Nexus S versus Nexus One, I did sort of a versus, uh, and I showed Google Earth being used here. This is actually one of the smoothest implementations of Google Earth I've seen on a mobile phone, uh, really without any lags or delays. 
So this is not only doing some 3D processing, uh, but it's also got to pull in a lot of information. Uh, it is now connected to Wi-Fi, and as you sort of zoom in, uh, it's very, very, very quick. And that same thing can sort of translate over to the browser as well. Certainly, if you're an Android user, chances are you want to take advantage of the fantastic browser, uh, which is, of course, capable of Flash 10.1. Uh, you can turn that off if you don't want to consume the extra battery life, uh, but it does work very well here. Uh, and Pitch to Zoom, obviously, this is multi-touch supported, uh, works very, very nicely on the device. You can see some Flash content uh, going on here. Certainly, turning that off is also going to increase the speed of the device. Uh, we also bring to the table here a new YouTube player and a new application store, or a new Android market rather. Uh, all that stuff is available on older Android devices. Some of the first times that we've seen it, however, though, uh, are on here on the Nexus S. So let's go ahead and jump back home and let's talk a bit about this screen. And to do so, let me go ahead and pull up some pictures uh, to give you an example of what this is going to look like. Let's jump into wallpapers, for example. We'll go ahead and check out some of the wallpapers here. Now, it may be hard to translate on camera, but looking at some images, let's look at a very green image. And this is sort of going to be representative review of a Super AMOLED screen as a whole. Go ahead and go to a new screen. Pictures look beautiful. Uh, colors really pop. The resolution may not be the highest at 480 by 800, but it's very, very, very sharp images uh, and very readable text. The one knock that I had on Super AMOLED screens versus regular uh, screens, regular AMOLED technology, whatever it might be, is that they do give a little bit of a bluish kind of gray cast when you look at white backgrounds. So if we jump back to this website, which is Techno Buffalo, uh, you'll see in the text, go ahead and try and hit that. Uh, the text does look, or at least the background, which is supposed to be white, uh, it does have a little bit of a tint to it. Now, it's nothing that's going to detract from the experience, and you really don't notice it unless you have two phones next to each other. Uh, so that's going to be a trade-off, whether or not you can deal with that little bit of a tint uh, for the very, very sharp uh, picture quality you're going to get, uh, and the really nice text that you're going to get as well. If I zoom in right there on text, you can see uh, how crisp and how sharp it is, which is really important, at least for me. Uh, if you've read a lot of websites, you do a lot of reading on your phone, you want the text to be nice and sharp. So the tint doesn't always bother me. Uh, sometimes I do notice it, but I do test a lot of phones and I see them next to each other. Uh, so that may be just a matter of personal preference. But something to keep in mind. Uh, one of the knocks I had on the previous Nexus device, the Nexus One, uh, were the capacitive buttons at the bottom. Uh, I went on and on and on about how unresponsive those capacitive buttons were. Uh, on the Nexus One. On the Nexus S, that has definitely been remedied. These are very responsive to capacitive buttons. They might as well just be physical buttons here uh, at the bottom. They work very well and they work as advertised. So one of the concerns people have been having uh, with the Nexus S is build quality. Samsung has, uh, whether it's justified or not, a reputation for maybe not the most uh, industrial build quality of phones. So the Nexus S, the back of it is plastic uh, and is a fingerprint magnet uh, of plastic, but it does have a nice build quality to it. Uh, it's got that sort of reverse chin and the reverse hump, and the phone does feel very nice in the hand. That four inch screen, I think, really is a sweet spot. If you're worried about build quality, and certainly what you're comparing that to, uh, it's probably going to be a more industrial feeling device here, like the Nexus One, which has a lot of metals to it. Uh, you're not going to get that on the Nexus S. This is a mostly plastic device, uh, which does take away a bit from the premium of the phone, and this really is a very fast, very capable phone. Uh, perhaps one of the fastest, most capable phones uh, on the market, depending what your OS preference is going to be. Camera-wise, looks just like you'd expect from a 5 megapixel camera. It's nothing outstanding. It's not nothing that's going to replace your point-and-shoot or your DSLR. You're not going to be taking Ansel Adams like pictures on this thing and blowing them up uh, to fill up a wall or anything. But if you want to snap pictures of your friends out at a party, uh, this is definitely going to be a fine camera. The flash washes images out, but it's nothing uh, terribly bad or even terribly good for that matter. Uh, the big news here, again, sort of recapping this whole thing, is Android 2.3, which does add a lot of different niceties. Uh, some of the other features that it adds very quickly, and I'll wrap this up, uh, you now have a full application management from inside the operating system. So if I hit menu, you can now manage apps right from there. If I go ahead and jump into settings, for example, or any list, uh, you're going to get some nice graphical uh, cues here. So at the top, you see that little sort of yellow bar that comes let you know you're at the end of a list. Uh, just very nice. And you'll see Android 2.3, which brings a lot of these features 
start to trickle down to uh, older Android handsets. Uh, we've already seen unofficial builds for a lot of phones, and presumably we'll start seeing official builds for a lot of phones. So if you want a taste of gingerbread, and you're currently rocking some Froyo, uh, or even an earlier build of Android, stay tuned, because uh, hopefully you will get your taste of the dessert. So in conclusion, on a one to five scale, uh, the Nexus S is a really, really capable phone, uh, one that I could see definitely using as a daily driver. Uh, it's got a gorgeous screen, it's very fast, it's really capable, and it's probably one of the best Android phones out on the market, and it's unadulterated Android. Uh, there isn't any skin on top of this. So whether you like it or don't like that, it doesn't have touch width, it doesn't have HTC Sense, uh, it's just stock Android as Google built it. So maybe you're getting some speed increases by not having a skin on top. Uh, who knows, in my Versus video, I ran a Quadrant speed test, uh, which is a sort of an arbitrary way, I guess, to evaluate the performance of a phone. Uh, and this phone actually got the top of all the Android phones that have been tested. Uh, so this thing really is capable and does a very nice job. It's unlocked, so bring your own SIM card. You're not gonna be tied into a contract, though you can get it uh, on contract through T-Mobile. If you're an AT&T customer, just remember, that you're gonna be limited to only edge speeds. And okay, so on a one to five scale, I give this, and I haven't given many five uh, star reviews, uh, this phone definitely gets a five star. If you're an Android fan or looking to get into the open source operating system and you don't currently have a phone, this is gonna be a great choice for you. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily run to upgrade from a Nexus One or a Galaxy S type phone, uh, but if you're using an older Android phone or a flip phone and you want to get into the smartphone market, this is going to be a fantastic choice for you. Anyway guys, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. This is a full review for you of the Nexus S, the Google phone built by Samsung. For all your tech news, be sure to check out Techno Buffalo. And for exclusive tech content, check me out at Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. All those links are down below. I'm John Rettinger, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.